In this video, we will be disassembling, cleaning, and reassembling an Elson USA made watchmaker's lathe. The three main parts of a watchmaking lathe are the headstock, the tailstock, and the lathe bed. This lathe has a painted black crinkle finish, which I will be cleaning with some mild household cleansers. My goal is to preserve the painted finish as much as I can. The exposed steel surfaces will be cleaned as well using isopropyl alcohol. There are some small chips in the paint and a small amount of rust, which I think can easily be cleaned off. I'm starting with Simple Green, an environmentally friendly all-purpose grease cutter on a cloth rag. I'll disassemble the lathe hardware and give it a good cleaning, along with the lathe collets in the ultrasonic cleaner a little bit farther along in the video. I'm using 99% isopropyl alcohol in this pump container to dispense a small amount onto a swab, which can then reach deeper into the crevices of the lathe. I need to be extra careful with the isopropyl alcohol because it will remove the paint. Once I get all of the bare steel parts clean, I will be applying a few coats of automotive paste wax to protect against rust and help the parts slide smoothly against each other. I'm impressed by how simple the construction of this lathe is. The tailstock comes apart easily. The headstock is also machined to an impressive level of quality, and I'm going to completely take it apart, clean it, lubricate it, and reassemble it. The lathe came with a variety of attachments, chucks, and collets. While not necessarily in bad shape, many of the parts are dirty and have some light rust. Just for fun, I'm going to try cleaning everything in a bath of Evaporust rust remover. But since Evaporust can take up to 48 hours to do its job, I want to see what happens if we heat it up and put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll make a separate video about that process and put a link in the description. Here are the parts after my Evaporust experiment. I think it went well. There's still a little bit more grime that the drying rag removed, but overall everything looks clean and consistent. Boy, what a time saver. I'll put the ultrasonic cleaned parts under my warm air blower to make sure that they're dry. While they were cooking, I loaded up another batch of dirty parts for the ultrasonic cleaner. These parts did not need to go into Evaporust, and we cleaned in a mixture of dish soap and degreaser, which has worked well for me in the past. Yummy. Look at all that grime that came off. There's something super satisfying about polishing brass that has tarnished over time. Brasso is a metal polish that I use frequently, which is made for brass, but can also polish most other metals. Let's see if we can make some of our parts shine. Hey, that came out great. I used wet paper towel to remove any polish that was left behind, and then ran the parts back through the dryer to make sure that the water was gone. We've got all of our parts de-rusted. Look at that brass. Beautiful. There was only one step left before calling it a day. Um, all these parts that I washed, I don't want rust creeping back in. So I'm going to take some household oil and uh, just do a, a very, very light coating. So I'm just going to go through here and I just want to very lightly touch everything. Okay, let's reassemble the lathe. The wood stand was constructed by a previous owner and seemed to be cobbled together with recycled wood, spare parts, and DIY ingenuity. Looks recycled and vintage. It's held together with nails, flathead screws, and uh, waffle connectors. I gave the stand a fresh coat of paint and replaced some of the hardware as needed, especially the pesky slot head screws. The holes in the base are sized to accept 8mm collets. There's also a hinged motor mount that you'll see shortly. With the lathe bed secured to the wood base, I'm going to wax the sliding surfaces and start the reassembly process. 
I've been using Johnson's Paste Wax on the tables of my woodworking tools for years, like my table saw, drill press, and bandsaw. The wax deters rust and provides a slick surface without being greasy or tacky. Not only does the paste wax work well on metal, but it's also a great conditioner for leather and I've used it on belts and watch bands. You just wipe it on, let it sit until it forms a haze, and buff it off with a clean cloth. Let's get the tailstock reassembled. Here I'm adjusting the screw on the bottom of the tailstock so it locks securely on the bed. Next I'm reinstalling and adjusting the tool rest so it moves freely and locks in place easily. I'm also making sure that all of the height and rotation adjustments are easy to move and lock in place as well. It's time to reassemble the headstock. The headstock is the workhorse of the lathe and needs to be cleaned and lubricated to spin freely under load for long periods of time. While I have already wiped the parts off, I'm going to give them a final wipe down with mineral spirits to make sure that they're clean before lubricating and reassembling them. I haven't been using mineral spirits because I didn't want to damage any of the painted surfaces. But now that we are in the home stretch, I'm going to clean all of the non-painted parts of the headstock a little more thoroughly. I'm surprised by how much more grime is coming off the parts. I've seen a lot of debate on whether you should use a dedicated spindle oil to lubricate the headstock or whether a high quality motor oil will do the trick. I decided to go with this Mobile One Synthetic 5W30 motor oil. If any of you have a strong opinion, I'm happy to hear it in the comments below. With the spindle nice and slippery, I'm test fitting it through the press fit cone bearings and mating it to the rear bearing. Happy with the fit, I'll place the rubber belt over the headstock and thread the cone pulley onto the spindle. There's a detent on the spindle to accept the cone pulley's set screw, which is aligned with the slotted keyway on the drawbar end of the spindle. There's a slot for an oil reserve on the top of the cone bearings, which feeds lubricant to the interior surface. This split adjusting nut gets tightened to hold the spindle in place. You want to take up any wiggle or end shake in the spindle without restricting its free rotation. This cone pulley can then be tightened down, making sure the set screw is in its recess on the spindle. A thin tipped screwdriver is used to snug the split adjusting nut just a little bit further, locking it in place. I'll top off the oil reservoir and the cone bearings. Before attaching the brass dust caps, the dust caps have a notch at the top that allows you to add oil and a split on the bottom. You can carefully spread the cap to expand it into place, but be very careful that you don't permanently bend or tear the soft brass part. The final step is inserting the drawbar and engaging a collet to make sure everything is tightening and aligning correctly. After all that work, I'll reinstall the headstock on the lathe and confirm that we have the proper range of motion and alignment with the tailstock. With the center chucked up in the headstock, I will try the razor blade trick to see if it's aligned with the tailstock. With the two points pressed together, a razor blade should remain straight up and down and not deflect in any particular direction. While not perfect, I think we're off to a very good start with the new lathe. Time to install the motor that I cleaned and rewired in another video. The motor pulley is installed. Next I'll attach a bracket and some hinges for the motor platform. With this setup, the weight of the motor will put tension on the drive belt. A short carriage bolt passes through a hole in the bracket, which will allow me to apply additional downward pressure if just the weight from the motor isn't enough. The rubber caps I purchased to use as wiring gaskets in the motor will serve double duty as little shock absorbing pads under the motor feet. 
Hey, there we go. The lathe is almost ready to go. How's vibration? Let's see. There we go. Put this on big here. You switch speeds on this lathe by varying the combination of large and small pulley settings. The belt is aligned by sliding the headstock. Here we go. I'm going to stand to the side. Here we go. It runs. I tested various pulley combinations for different speeds and ran the lathe motor in both directions. Please check out my other videos in this series to watch step by step how I rebuilt the motor, my adventures with sharpening cutting gravers, and my first attempt at using the lathe. I'm Mike. The channel is Watch with Mike. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to our next time together.